Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto. Today we're gonna to make this fireplace around using cherry and concrete. Check it. Recently, we had new hardwood flooring put in and when we moved this out, the marble slabs around the outside here fell and broke. So it's just been this open space for the last few weeks. I had the gas company come out. They cleaned out the gas fireplace and they gave us the specs for our fireplace saying how much non-combustibles has to be around the outside. So we're going to pour some concrete slabs and have that around the face. So if you're going to do this, you have to do your research and look up the specs for your particular gas fireplace. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make the carcass of the fireplace. I got some cherry plywood here. I can't get a full sheet of plywood in my car so I had Toledo plywood cut it down the middle. The other piece is over there and I got this piece right here. This will be the top piece. Respect the cherry. I have Fusion 360 open here. For the front, we're using real cherry. Well, got my table saw all set up. I'm going to assemble the carcass with pocket holes and no glue. I want to be able to take this apart if I need to or if I want to modify it in the future. Y'all know pocket holes is my favorite joinery. Where'd that accent come from? I'm not gonna glue anything together because I don't want it to be permanent in case I want to change my mind. So normally I would add glue, but not this time. I'm working on the trim for the top. I have decided to put a chamfer on the one edge. I'm doing it in two passes to make the job easier on the router. So I'm getting ready to do the second pass here. So as I'm working on the trim here, I noticed that the cut on the plywood here is not very clean. I'm not sure if I did that or Eric did that or if that's the factory edge. And that's going to cause a little gap in my trim here. And so what I've decided to do is I can't really sand that flush because I'll sand through the veneer on the plywood here. So instead of covering it up, I'm going to enhance it and put a little groove. This would probably be easier with two people. If there are only two people in here. Oh, 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 I think I'm doing a good job. And, oh, might have to recut that one. Something I didn't think about before putting on the front rail is I probably should have reinforced it with dowels or domino. It'll be all right, but I decided on the two end pieces to use the domino, especially since I can't get clamps on them because I don't have clamps long enough. So that creates a little hole there. And then on the mating piece, you just line up that line with the tick mark. So then you buy these little dominoes. Pieces going the 
edge here to cover this up. This little thing my buddy Jack taught me. Stick a screw in there. Electrical tape. We're good to go for next time. And then we'll let that cure for 48 hours. All right, we'll remove this from the mold here. I talked to my buddy Ben over at Homemade Modern and he gave me some great tips. Originally, we put everything in a bucket, added water, and started stirring it with a stick. Ben said use a tray and a hoe, that way you're, you're pulling it in, on, on top of itself and it's a lot easier to mix that way. I should not have glued down the sides, instead I should have screwed them in so I could unscrew them to remove them. I noticed on a couple of the pieces you could see there's a little bit of discoloration down the middle where the rebar is. And Ben said, if you set this out in the sun for a couple of hours, it will even out the tone. And then we're going to put a, a, a water-based acrylic on top of there, just to darken it just a little bit, and maybe that'll even out the tone. And then around the edge where the sealant was, it's a little bit discolored. And he says, sanding that down a little bit should help with that. I learned a couple lessons in pouring concrete. I should have done a little bit more research, but everything did come out fine. I would like to thank Ben from Homemade Modern for the great tips, please check out his channel. I totally forgot to do was, I was going to put a bolt in there and let it dry. That way I would have some sort of way to attach these. Uh, um, so now we have to kind of work around that. I'm a little disappointed in myself. All right, so now that this guy is all finished up, I need a way to hold the concrete slabs to the face from behind. So I'm gonna take a two by four, cut out a little L, and then screw that in from back, and hopefully that'll be enough clamping pressure to keep the concrete in place. I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Make It Snappy Tools. One of the cool things about them is a third generation family owned business started in a basement shop in Minnesota in 1962. How cool is that? They manufacture drill accessories for power drills, impact drivers, and drill presses. And drill presses. Check this out. They have the snappy system. That's where the name comes from. I love this. So it's, it's a quick change system and that locks in there all the different drill bits. I am loving this. You've been seeing me use this in the past couple of videos and you're gonna see me use it a lot in the upcoming videos because I really like this system. I got the drill bits with the countersink built into that. I always love that. Makes life so much easier. I got the regular drill bits. Something we're not using in today's project but you're gonna see me use very soon are these plug cutters here. They use superior materials, cutting edge machinery and patented technology and deliver industrial quality tools at an affordable price proudly made in the USA.
Thanks to Make It Snappy Tools for supporting independent creators such as myself. Please check them out. There'll be a link down in the description. You're gonna see me use their stuff a lot in my upcoming videos. All right, let's get back to this fireplace and get it installed in my living room. I'm just clamping these in from behind. I got one in there. You can't see what I'm doing, but you're just gonna have to trust me that these little clips are just screwed in the back and then the concrete is slid in there and kind of clamped down in there. It's how the old one was built. It's also how the marble slabs out of the old one fell out and broke. But as I slid out, I didn't know how it was put together. It's not anchored to the wall in any way. The old one wasn't anchored as well. Um, I do need to get a multi-tool and cut the trim so I can get it back flush against the wall. And then um, so one other thing I gotta do is I gotta pour one more piece of concrete that's going to go, go on the floor here. And this is this was a mistake one, um, but this kind of shows you what it's going to look like. It's going to wrap around the corners here, and once this gets flush against the wall, um, this piece will sit back there a little bit further. Um, but then we're going to have another piece of concrete that comes out about right here and covers up this edge and has these little corners. The concrete came from Menards, hashtag not sponsored, but they sell countertop mix. Uh, Home Depot does sell countertop mix, but not in the stores, and you actually have to special order it. And so um, that's that's what we used. It was pretty easy to mix. Just add water, pour it into uh, a form, and, and you're good to go. It's crazy, super heavy. I was able to lower it a little bit. I don't like my TV up super high. I couldn't go any lower because I needed... Um, I needed six inches of clearance between the fireplace and uh, combustibles. And then it needed to be, I think, 12 inches from the top to, to the ledge. Uh, every fireplace is different. You have to look at the specs for your particular fireplace if you're going to make a surround. Uh, do, and doing some research, some gas fireplaces don't require any non-combustibles, so you can build right up to it. I would like to thank Snappy Tools for sponsoring today's video. I have links down below. Please check them out. You're going to see me use them a lot in some upcoming videos. All the solid cherry comes from my friends at KenCraft. You can visit them at KenCraftCompany.com and they do sell online family owned business, good friends of mine, check them out. Nothing is glued together except for the trim. I, everything is just pocket hold together. That way I can take it apart, remake things if I want to in the future. I'm gonna look at this every single day. And uh, so if in the future I don't like it, I could easily change something. So the top comes right off, the sides come right off. I finished it with two coats of shellac, three coats on the top. I really, really love the way shellac looks on cherry. It is cherry. The original plan was to use construction adhesive, uh, glue them to like a two by four frame that was anchored to the wall and that was going to be completely separate than the wood surround and it just it complicated things because there's a gas line to work around and uh, we said ah screw it let's just let's just wedge them in there with those little L brackets that we made. It's not going anywhere it's it's rock solid. It's concrete solid. All right folks Thank you for watching. I am David Petrito with Make Something. We'll see you next week. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. something.